Welcome to my studio. Some of you asked what inspires me. My studio inspires me. When a lot of people walk through my studio, I sense that they get a bit overwhelmed, but I like to be surrounded by everything creative, whether it's my art supplies or the art of others, things I collect, books I love. Um, all of those things inspire me. All I have to do is look around and find something that catches my eye that day and somehow or another, it will inspire me. This is my gallery wall. So it's got a lot of art by all kinds of people. Some of that is my art. Some of it was given to me as a gift. Um, other pieces are from friends that I've traded art with. Um, some is work of former students. Um, things I've collected uh, when traveling, <clears throat> um, birthday gifts. Um, gosh, I've just I've got all kinds of weird things on that wall, but definitely these are some of my very favorite things that totally inspire me all the time. Definitely the things that I love are in my studio. Um, my most treasured pieces that will, are valuable only to me are all gathered in this one chaotic environment. Sometimes I clean it up and it looks nice and neat, ready to have its picture made, but today I wanted to show you what it's really like in there. Um, 23 hours of the day. These are my favorite books, a lot of my favorite artists whose work inspires me, and um, some of my favorite books from childhood are here, um, and I was very inspired by um, books as a child. I love to read, and but the illustrations in children's books were very important to my creativity and, and to this day inspire me. I have a whole shelf full of old children's books that I cut up and paint on and draw on and use in collages and do all sorts of fun things with. Um, but I'm very inspired by book illustrations, children's book illustrations specifically. This is one of my favorite paintings ever. Some of you may know I'm a little weird about teeth and I really like to draw teeth, so anytime I can find a painting of teeth, I pretty much am gonna get it, if I can. And you'll see that's a recurring theme in a lot of my work. <laughs> I didn't really realize how much so until I filmed this studio tour and started going through my stuff. One artist that particularly inspires me is Jim Henson, the creator of the Muppets. And I've always been a huge fan of Kermit the Frog. He's definitely my favorite Muppet of all times. My favorite Mississippian, as I like to say. Um, and little people are big. That's a big reminder from my childhood. Something that I loved and it brings back such fond memories for me. Um, those are things that inspire me. Old Barbie dolls. I like to use their heads and projects. This is my cabinet that's full of art supplies and um, old sketchbooks. And then I have on the bottom of this cabinet tons and tons of books and uh, resources that I use for my work. Um, I love to do collage and um, so I love to tear out old pages of books and paint on those. Um, I have old church hymnals from all kinds of different churches. Uh, I paint on a lot of hymns. Sometimes I paint over the entire hymnal. Um, I've made lots of gifts for preachers. 
So now let's take a little tour of my silver drawers, as I call them. These are just full of all sorts of interesting things that I use. And again, and I'm inspired by things that I find in these drawers. Um, I would say probably once a day, I end up looking in every one of these drawers for something. And I never know what I'm gonna find that's gonna give me some sort of little spark. I love printmaking. I loved teaching printmaking when I taught school. And I did printmaking with even art camp, even the youngest little bitty ones loved printmaking. And it's something I still teach in my private art lessons. And, um, and I, something that I like to do as an artist. This is a medium that a lot of people don't know that I am, um, what would you say, experienced in maybe? Um, and that's the art of bookmaking. When I was in graduate school um, at the University of Alabama, I majored, well, I mean, my degree was in art education, but I had to get my Master of Arts with some um, specialty areas. And so sculpture was what I decided to make my um, emphasis. And as part of my sculpture classes, I took a class at the, there at the university on the very top floor of the library. They had a book arts program. There are very few in the United States and it's one of um, the best. And um, I learned so much there, um, just an amazing amount of technique and craftsmanship that I probably would have never picked up on before that I've used every day um, from those classes. So some of these books I'm showing you here are things that I did with students. You know, those are my examples, but then some of the pieces that I show you are pieces that I did in graduate school um, that were part of my thesis and <clears throat> my final show. This one, in fact, this was based on a writing uh, prompt we had called I Remember. And, you know, we just wrote for like 10 minutes straight about something that we remembered and turned that into a book. Um, later, I used that same writing prompt and had my students do that. Um, definitely something that I really enjoy, but I don't do very often. It's very tedious, very, very tedious and uh, time consuming. This example, um, we learned uh, how to marble paper. And I marbled all of that paper. And then we had to learn all these different techniques of sewing, like Japanese book binding, sewing styles and, um, you know, all these different techniques for folding papers. So, um, it's, you can see, I, I always have a kind of a morbid sense of humor or inappropriate sense of humor. And that's always come through. It definitely did in my bookmaking. Um, we had lots of fun in that program. People from all over the United States were there. It's a very tiny program too. So you really got to know the people well um, and then here are just some little clay pieces I made somewhere along the way I don't know why those are in that drawer um, but there they are more teeth this these drawers have artwork that I'm working on uh, they're not really that well organized actually some these are things old drawings I've done um, that I've had prints made of and uh, works in progress, um, nice papers, sketch pads that I haven't used yet. It's really kind of just all sorts of stuff. Things that I'm trying to protect anyway and keeping, keeping those things flat and semi-protected because Obviously, I can't leave these things lying around in my studio because they would be instantly covered in something they shouldn't be. I 
I started a new series based on uh, George Jones and an accident he had down that happened down the road from my grandmother's house in Lackey, Mississippi, which is outside of Aberdeen, Mississippi, which is where I grew up. Uh, he got really drunk and had a wreck, and uh, it was the biggest news to hit Aberdeen. He was, uh, I think actually he was headed there to do a concert, and um, he and his girlfriend, this is post Tammy Wynette, he and his girlfriend got into an argument because he was, he was just so drunk, um, and he had a wreck, and everybody in Aberdeen went out to see the wrecked car. He was fine, I think. I, I mean, he did have to go to the hospital, but anyway, that fascinated me as a child, so I started doing this series of drawings based on that story, the way it happened in my head. So these are just more drawers and shelves full of supplies, lots of papers, boxes of those old plastic letters that people used to make little bulletin boards with at school. Somebody cleaned out of the closet at school one day and said, do you want these? And of course, I had to have those. Um, little did I know when I had this box called Glass and Shells that I would end up painting 300 oyster shells one day, which is what I've been working on lately. Yet another of my side hustles is my window painting um, adventure that I've been on lately. This is my bucket of window painting supplies, or some of those. Glues, assorted items that are kind of odd that I have. My acrylic tube paints that I try to keep sorted by color. That helps me a lot when I'm painting, be able to just pull out the bucket of blues or the, you know, bucket of oranges or neutrals. So those are things that help a lot. So pretty much everywhere you look in my studio, you'll find, I will find inspiration. You may not find inspiration. Yes, I do have to carve out a space to work because currently every place is covered up, but I'm always moving, shifting, rearranging. I rearrange my studio several times a year, depending on what I'm working with, and I somehow make it work. Thank goodness for folding tables and cabinets on wheels because it's a constantly shifting, evolving space. I hope you've enjoyed my studio tour.